good afternoon everybody and uh, in the midst of all all of you creative people i might sort of look like a sore thumb <laughs> and the introduction probably added to that as well uh, nonetheless i hope to keep you uh, interested for the next 15 minutes what i plan to talk to you about is how to be a technologist and how to use that to change the world sounds a little boring but <laughs> let's look at what uh, we can do with it. Um, technology is something which is an opportunity, as I will put it to you, to change the world. And each of you can be a technologist, and you don't need to have a degree in technology to be a technologist. Okay? And the whole thought process which I want to convey to you is just to excite you to all be technologists. And one thing which I have in common with many of the people who spoke today is I love what I do, just like uh, some of you who spoke uh, uh, earlier today. So let's get started. You must have all noticed, and all of you might, many of you might also feel that, uh, uh, you know, that pressure on you when you see nature acting as an oppressor, you know, uh, and that. Uh, that is quite a, a feeling where you know you feel quite helpless in the midst of nature coming up with all these different problems that you're facing. And uh, more recently, you must have seen this news article, right? Uh, here was a kid who passed away because of dengue, and the parents killed themselves uh, in just in sheer despair and sadness, right? And it hits you. It hits you hard, and you feel that desperation where nature sent its emissary in the form of a dengue virus and took the life of a little kid, and you were helpless. It would have been great if we could have a dengue vaccine at this time to have saved that life of the kid and the, and the uh, parents to go along with it. And that's not, that's just one incident. There's so many others looming challenges in front of us. Uh, food security going to be a big issue in India, energy security, healthcare, environment, and so many more problems uh, that are in front of us. And all of these challenges are going to require solutions. And in all of these, you know, I feel that the real solution will emerge from technology. And all through centuries, technology has been the thing that has really created all those changes around you right from the stone tools that you began with, to the metal implements, to the weapons, to the farming methods, right up to more recent years of steam engines, the internet, the vaccines, the drugs, and so on and so forth. Right? And of course, it is actually the hope giver. Okay? So why is it that many of us cannot contribute to that in many more uh, ways? And it has a way of empowering us as humans, right? And we have, we have seen so many examples around us. Sometimes we get indifferent to this, but I hope we are sensitive to that. The Green Revolution, which basically made us a food surplus nation. Or the fact that we as Indians enjoy the lowest cost medicines and vaccines in the world today. Okay? And that is something we take for granted uh, very often. Or that there are technologies which empower people to do things which they are not able to do today. And so many more other uh, things that empower us. And that has been also in the minds of many people over generations. And philosophers have talked about technology as primarily the, primarily the means to extend man's power over nature. And nature as an oppressor and our fight against nature or fight to stand up against nature is something which is the bottom line as far as technology is concerned. It empowers us and in effect we are basically trying to build a collective future for us ourselves and shape that future uh, ourselves. Let's just go into a little bit of mechanics of this whole process okay? in as simple terms as possible. Technology is as simple as a problem meeting a solution and solution meeting a problem. And at the end of it, you have a simple technology idea. Here is an example, a humble jugad that you see on uh, many in North Indian highways, which all said and done serves a very useful purpose. It gives you a mode of public transportation where none exists. 
So what if there isn't too much novelty in it? It is a technology nonetheless. It solves a given problem, right? But there's a, a little more exciting version of a technology, and that's inventions. Okay, and those inventions are those where you inject a little bit of novelty. All of us are will be sure to bat for the common zip. It has saved us from many embarrassments, right? But it's a great design idea, a great invention. Okay, so what if it didn't have too much science in it? It's a great invention nonetheless. But there's another, a very glamorous version of an invention, which is the scientific invention, where you inject elements of science into it. Okay? You bring your insights of the problem or the solution into it, and you come up with a scientific invention. And the classic example here is of Alexander Fleming coming up with, a, with penicillin. Here was a guy who was possessed with his similar kind of happiness and a joy in pursuing a career in science studying microorganisms okay and he leaves a petri dish of microorganisms behind to find fungus growing there a failed experiment but sees that around the fungus bacteria is not growing and then goes back and thinks about it because he's at the same time possessed in his heart of this problem around the world that there are soldiers dying of infection okay bacterial infection can i connect the two to find a solution and there you have the birth of the antibiotics industry right but it doesn't stop there this is the real exciting part right this inventions and that is what is just a small part of what eventually becomes a technology that you all celebrate as an innovation right all the inventions that you talk about today are all those that went all the way here there are many that bit the dust right in the very beginning Okay, which you don't remember right now. The ones which you remember are the ones which went all the way. And this journey is what is facilitated by this technology entrepreneur. The person who sees an opportunity and builds a model, a revenue model to make it happen, to convert it into a final product and service that people use and therefore celebrate that uh, 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 invention. And that requires a certain mindset, a mindset of a technologist, a mindset of an innovator. And there are a few things that stand out in this. The first is the focus on the problem. The, the problem is what is important. And it's very interesting that in the Indian context, you know, you'll, many of you will relate with this when I say, and this is what Professor Langer said in science, a professor at MIT, he said, when you're a student, you're judged by how well you answer questions. But in life, you're judged by how good your questions are. It is how exactly you probe the problem, how you pose curiously uh, original questions to expose the core of the problem that determines your ability to take a technology ahead to build something interesting out of it. And there's another very interesting element, which is the foresight and the accompanying loneliness of an innovator. Okay? The foresight to be able to see the potential of what you want to do okay? uh, and what is possible from your own ideas. And along with it comes a loneliness because nobody buys into it at that time. You're alone. You stand alone in your conviction. Okay, that this is the thing to do and everybody is mocking you, not necessarily joining you at uh, that point. For example, you'd, it's interesting to see that the President of the United States, while excited about the uh, curiosity called the telephone, remarked at that time, who would want to use it anyway? Right? In today's context, when you all pulled out your smartphones when uh, Karthik asked you to do it, would you even imagine saying this? Huh? The, the British went for even further. They said the Americans have need for the telephone, but we do not. We have plenty of messenger boys. You know, this is what came up at the time of the Western Union, which you have all seen as small shops at around the corners. Okay, refused to license the telephone from Graham Bell, forcing him to create a company called the, which eventually became the Bell Labs. Okay. There's another aspect which I just want to point out too, which is the vision, the commitment, and the persistence of an inventor. Okay? It is not merely just the opportunity that you see, but it's that vision and the clarity of it. The clarity of the vision is what gives you the, the, the persistence you know, to pursue it. It is your clarity in your mind that you're building upon. 
Edison, for example, many of you, if I ask you who was the inventor of the light bulb, pop comes the answer, it's Edison, right? It's not. Actually, there's an 80-year history that goes before it, okay? Uh, but he was the guy who built the filament, who ident invented the filament which would create the commercially viable, long-lasting electric bulb, okay? And that bulb, he had this clear vision at that time itself and he had the foresight to say, we will make electricity so cheap that only the rich will burn candles, okay? And another interesting thing I want to tell you is that what good would have been a bulb if electricity was not coming to every household, okay? And at that time, there were gas utilities, not electric uh, utilities coming to the household. So here was a guy so committed to his idea that he went on to start the Edison Illuminating Company to take electricity to every household and therefore light his electric bulb, okay? And that is another characteristic of an inventor. And unfortunately, as of now, India doesn't seem to be contributing enough. We are not doing enough to contribute to the problems around the world. And many of you must have read this in the newspaper, Narayan Murthy complaining about how India doesn't seem to have had any earth-shaking invention in the last uh, 60 years. Well, that's true. Okay? Uh, I don't want to comment on what else was true in that article, but it, this is true. It's, it's, it's a fact. And India is slipping. We know that. Okay? Uh, in the, in the so-called Global Innovation Index, in the last several years, you will notice that we have been slipping from 64 to 66, 76, and now in 2015 to the 81st rank uh, in, among uh, all uh, countries. Right? That said, it was not always so. This was not a normal state of affairs. We, many of you in your history books have learned about all the possible, all the different inventions that Indians have come up with. Even in little more recent years, in the early, nine, early uh, 1900s, there were many inventions. For example, right here in Pune, Bharat Ratna Vishwesharaya okay, invented the automatic gates for Khadakwasla Dam, right? A civil engineer from, right, this city doing uh, this in 1899. J.C. Bose in 1905 filed the first and grant, got a grant of a U.S. patent in the U.S. for his pioneering work in wireless communications, okay? S.S. Bhatnagar, who was actually the founder of the CSIR system in India, uh, in right through the period of independence in our span of 20 years was inventing prolifically and filing patents, about 29 patents and industrial collaborations with licenses in that span of time. And then something went wrong and we had a span where we somehow couldn't do uh, very much more. But I think the tide is turning and given that fact that my I have the benefit of having my ears to the ground as far as the Indian innovation ecosystem is concerned. I'm happy to say that we are, we seem to be at a point, at an inflection point where uh, the tides are turning. And one of the key things that's happening here is the fact, is, is how India is today resourcing and creating um, action around this whole invention uh, and uh, technology development uh, activity. The busy slide, but what I want to tell you is in a country where somehow we seem to see a dichotomy between people who pursue creativity and intellectual pursuits on one side and people who pursue wealth and prosperity on the other side, okay, it's interesting that today people are putting creativity uh, to pursue prosperity, okay? Uh, and that is happening because of certain actions that are happening uh, today in the ecosystem itself. In, a point I just want you to note here is this continuity in, say for example, funding, which I'm using as, a, as a, just an indicator of the ecosystem. That continuity indicates that at least there is no major gap, okay? And that people are at least able to build some of their ideas and take it ahead. Furthermore, right here in Pune, there are many young people who are today working to build really path-making inventions which will hopefully see the light of day and change the way India contributes to uh, innovation. For example, intraocular lenses that would give perfect specta uh, spectacle free vision for elderly people in rural India, for example. A defibrillator that gives you shock 
okay, when you have a heart problem without like any external power or a battery, how can you do it? A road that can be laid out and paved, a rural road in India, in rural Maharashtra that can be done without heating, okay? an autopilot for drones that fits in your palm of your hand and many, many, many such other uh, ideas. And what I want to end by telling you is you might want to consider joining them. Be a technologist. Change the world. Thank you. Okay.